Hi, everyone. Uh, let's just get started with the next five questions. Uh, so uh, just to again, revise and think uh, how we are preparing for this exam, we are applying the strategy of compounding. And also uh, we are applying the strategy of gaining the confidence. So one of uh, the suggestion which I have uh, given before, read your exam objectives every day, do your affirmations every day just to remind uh, that uh, we are happy, we are healthy, we are energetic, also we are focused on getting this SQL exam out of the way. Uh, many of us, we are thinking about this exam uh, to complete it from long time. And uh, it's just like uh, what happens, we keep thinking about it. And so many days passed, then months passed, then years passed. And then uh, the now the exam which you were thinking, maybe that's not even available. It's like the new exam, which is the only one. And looks like this will be available for a lot of years, like uh, because it's associate level SQL certification with the advanced topics. So just keep doing your five questions every day. Uh, whenever you're doing the next days, your five, just revise the previous days uh, questions, all the previous days question, so that uh, you can get an idea. Uh, you can just get the idea about the type of questions, the uh, uh, what kind of knowledge is tested in those questions. So with that, we will go ahead with uh, today's topic and uh, I'm going to share my screen and we'll go from there. Okay, so give me a second to share my screen. I think this is the one I want to share. Close this and go ahead and just maximize this set. Yes, so uh, we are doing this preparation to gain the credential for Oracle Database Certified SQL Associate. So this is the badge which we are uh, going to earn, okay? So with that, the uh, topic for today. So if you have seen, we talked about uh, the data definition language, uh, data manipulation language, and data control language and transaction control language. So we saw transaction control language in the last five, a uh, lot of questions related to commit, rollback, save point. So right now, if you see over here in these five, our focus is on truncate, delete. So whenever we talk about the data definition language, we have create, alter, drop, truncate. For data manipulation language, you have select, insert, update, delete, and merge. For transaction control language, you have commit, rollback, and we have a save point. Then for the data control language, which are the two for data control language? Grant and revoke, okay? So we will go there also. So as I had mentioned before, the truncate and delete is the very close topic for examiners, for the uh, uh, CQL certification test, also for any of the interviews also. So over here, uh, the first question which we have, uh, which statement is true about uh, truncate and delete? So uh, as you see, the answer is in front of me, but like I'm trying to still show you the strategy why this answer was selected. So if you go ahead and see the rejection strategy, when you read this first one, actually, you know, this is correct. The truncate is used for the large table. So about truncate, what we remember, it's a data definition language whatever we truncate, all the data gets deleted and it's already committed. So you cannot do any rollback when you're doing, a, when you do a truncate on a table, it's actually deleting all, all the rows, free up all the space which was occupied. It doesn't destroy any of the indexes. It doesn't destroy any of the constraint. It just truncates the table. It just gets rid of all row. It makes it clean. It is faster. So all those facilities are with truncate. The only draw, drawback with the truncate is it cannot be rolled back. You cannot do rollback. You cannot do selective truncate. The meaning is like if you have a table with 10,000 rows, you cannot go ahead and truncate only 5,000 rows. That is not possible. That is possible with delete. So when you have a requirement of partially deleting the data, the only option you have is delete. 
okay but if you if you don't have that kind of restriction then truncate is the best option so if you remember these couple of rules about truncate then it's extremely easy to solve the questions for truncate delete okay so the next option is you can never delete uh, you can never delete the rows from a table if the foreign key constraint will be violated uh, you can never delete rows from the table if foreign key constraint will be violated. No, nothing like that. So uh, you can, for the tables uh, with multiple indexes and the triggers, delete is faster than truncate. No, delete, uh, always truncate is always faster than delete at any cost. Uh, you can never truncate a table if the foreign key constraint will be violated. Uh, nothing like that you just if the truncate if truncate is working then it will be working okay so the main thing over here even though some of these answers they look okay they look like okay they sound true but the most true is this for the large table the truncate is faster than delete this is like we can say because we are choosing only one answer this question if it's on the exam it's going to be a radio button it's going to be only one choice so because of that, I would select A because it sounds a little bit closer answer. Okay. So the next one is like you have a truncate. Again, you have a truncate table. Which two are true? So a rollback statement can be used uh, to retrieve a rollback st statement can be used to retrieve the deleted data. No, because we are doing a truncate. So it is a little bit confusing when I'm also reading, you saw like I had to read second. Time. Oh, okay, delete it, delete it. But we are doing a truncate. The question is on the truncate. So the data gets deleted, but can it be rolled back? No, it cannot be rolled back. It retains the indexes. Yes, it retains the indexes. It retains the constraint, which is answer number D. It drops any triggers um, defined on the table. Okay, it's nothing like that. It actually doesn't uh, do any dropping of the table. So if this was a other way answer, sometimes suppose you're getting which statements are true instead of that, they can ask which statements are false. That kind of question also can come. So just like try to see like what is the logic here. So you have to read this true and false very carefully. Here it's true. So we are getting whatever is true. A flashback table uh, statement can be used to retrieve the deleted data means truncated data no 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 flashback is only you know uh, we have a flashback topic in the uh, exam objective and we have done an activity guide for flashback which is when uh, you drop the table accidentally it goes to the recycle bin and you can retrieve it from the recycle bin the meaning is you can undo the drop operation because it's just temporarily staying in the recycle bin of oracle and you can get it back that's the in your scope of your exam that's a flashback operation okay so the next is so flashback doesn't apply for truncate for sure, okay. It doesn't apply for delete also in your case right now. We have seen the flashback only in case of drop for the scope of this exam. It always retains the space used by removed rows. No, the data, whenever truncate is used, it is most efficient performance wise also. Also, it also get you back the space. So you, if you delete all the 10,000 rows, you get all that space back in one chunk on top of it. Like, you know, so it's a better way of getting rid of the data. So because of that, we choose like over here, that answer B and D. So next one is also again on truncate and delete. Uh, which two statements are true. So now the question was same, but here the options are different. So just look at uh, the, like it could be any permutation combination. So just for this topic also focus on the concept then focusing on uh, any other thing, okay? So uh, these are the couple of concepts with delete and truncate. They will be always useful for your interview also for that matter. So which two statements are true about truncate and delete? Delete can use the where clause. Yes, it can use the where clause because selective delete is possible. And as you know that whenever we do delete, I always suggest you can do select or select count star to know how many rows are getting deleted because of that where criteria. And then we copy paste that where criteria to the delete statement to get rid or to delete the rows. Okay, that's a safer way of doing it because you already know that how many rows are getting deleted. 
the nest is tr truncate leaves any uh, truncate leaves an index on the table unusable no truncate actually doesn't do anything with the indexes or the uh, constraints on that table it just leaves it alone so unusable state it doesn't do it means like you have to again rebuild the indexes and all we don't need to do that truncate is okay the result of the delete can be undone by using the rollback. Yes, it is true because it's not truncate. Delete is okay. Truncate can use the where clause. No. Truncate result can be rolled back. No. So very straightforward answer. Very scoring question if this type of question comes actually. Okay. So the next one is on the DML. Uh, in general, DML, which is inserting, updating, deleting, merging, but merge is not asked here. The basic operations are insert, update, delete, and uh, merge is one of the other DML uh, in the list there. So update statements can have different subqueries, yes. Update, you can update multiple columns, just separated by comma. And whenever you're updating a column and you want to equate it to some value, you can write a subquery, you can write direct value, you can do anything like to generate that value on the right hand side to equate it to that column, we can generate it. It just need to be one value because we are updating one column, one row kind of a situation. If we are doing multiple columns, then it's a different thing, like we can do that also. Insert statements can insert ex null explicitly. Yes, we can do NULL is allowed when you're inserting. So it's not an error. DML statements require primary key, always no, it's not like that. Insert into select from, it's automatically data is committed, no. You have to commit explicitly. Delete statement can remove the multiple rows on the condition, yes, it can do it. So this is the, again, all these three statements about update, insert and delete, where the concept Okay, so just write it down in your book, write it down because these are inserting, updating, deleting related, what exactly that statement does and what kind of rule is applicable to that particular statement. That's what we are trying to uh, get over here. So now uh, the next one is on the ER diagram. Again, this particular topic, I would say, just look at this answer uh, and guess the answer to your best of your knowledge. The topic is very vast. Uh, the certification scope is very small. The question may not be asked also on this topic. Okay, so this is like what we know is like all the tables, we call it as entity, all the relationships are there. Then when you have primary key, foreign key, you have one to many ch parent child relationship, you have a, a table referencing to itself, a self join kind of a relationship. So over here, what looks more right is this answer B. Relationship can be mandatory uh, for both entities, okay, if we are relating them. One to many relationship in one direction and is a one to one relationship in the other direction, which is also sounding good because see the answer number E is completely not right. The table name can be specified just once when selecting the data from itself. No, when you do the self join, when we are joining the table with itself, we do the alias of the table. So this is completely wrong. The one to one relationship always is a self joining. No, one to one can be between two tables also. And uh, the many to many relationship can be implemented only by foreign keys that is also not true so i would say answer a c and e were actually like concept wise also wrong so because of that b and d were selected even you are convinced or i'm convinced i'm not convinced i'm selecting those because other three they definitely sounds wrong so this way we are completing these five uh hopefully Hopefully this is making sense and you're building your confidence. When you do your first test, which is with the uh, 50 questions together and you can um, get your result, uh, you will be keeping those results just to track yourself. When we are done with the 100 questions, then uh, I will give you a random test, just a separate test, just to test yourself, like how you're doing in that test. And we are still building on a couple of, like we are building on more questions also, but the first uh, milestone, which we usually test it is the 50 questions. So when you're done with the 50 questions, you have to contact me and then you will be taking the 50 question random test on a test mode in Quizlet. Okay, so how does that sound? I hope it's how interesting and all of you are ready for your 
50 question test. So with that, good luck to all of you and see you guys uh, in the next five. Thank you.